Hey everybody, so my name is Erica Switzer. You, first off, you're probably wondering why is this on in the house here? This is me for real, no makeup, so this comes in very handy. Anyway. <laughs> like I said, my name is Erica Switzer. I am a Chicago native, and I've been living, teaching, working, doing comedy in Shanghai, China for three and a half years. And I wanted to go ahead and do this video. I am reluctant to vlog, but I felt like this was very necessary at this point in time. I wanted to do it number one, to put my friends and family back home at ease. And number two, why not go ahead and see some firsthand stuff from somebody who actually lives in China. Let's go for a walk. Just walking down the street. I'm blessed to be surrounded by a few different so I know I shouldn't say the brand name necessarily but I'm gonna go for a walk and get my morning coffee and uh, it's a nice warm sunny day out here it is allergy season and the pollen is unforgiving <laughs> uh, we have these cool trees that uh, unfortunately drop seeds and stuff. <laughs> so that tends to wreak havoc on my allergies. But nevertheless, I am stocked up on, stocked up on my antihistamines, you know? Um, in light of everything that's going on, it hasn't been too difficult to live here as a black woman. Um, in a society where there's not a lot of people that look like me. You know, I'm automatically scrutinized just because I'm black. Uh, but I haven't encountered too much difficulty at all. That doesn't negate what's going on in other areas. So for example, in Guangzhou, which is a good two and a half or three hours away by plane. There have been some issues. Uh, speaking on that, it's unfortunate. And here's hoping that the ambassadors who've been trying to address that situation have been making some headway. But again, I can't necessarily comment on what I haven't experienced for myself. Mission accomplished. I got my hot muffin. I got my cold brew coffee. And I'm ready to get my day started. As are a lot of people here. Uh, Shanghai is back on the move after a few months. Just like any place that's been dealing with the uncertainty of the past few months. I can understand that there are some very necessary safety measures that have been putting, put in place because this is a public health issue. And in one of the world's largest cities, it's really necessary to strictly adhere to processes and to be compliant with the different measures that have been put in place. So, I didn't show you, but as I was entering the building, I had to get my temperature taken. And even going in, I also had to get my temperature taken. If I would have had a fever or something like that, they wouldn't have admitted me. And then I would have had to seek out the proper channels to go get taken care of. Again, it's a health issue. Oh, nice catch. I won't show you, but cat just got a really nice uh, morsel of a mouse. So even the cat's doing his duty to stay fed and go out on hunt. <laughs> um, traffic is moving. People are moving. And, um, 
It's always a very positive sign. So I was here when things started happening. And I remember how eerie it looked to have such a bustling city ground to a halt. Walking out in the street at night was like a scene from The Walking Dead, basically. And everything just felt like one very long live action episode of Black Mirror. So I'm just grateful to have been lucky in this situation. So people tend to ask me, why are you in Shanghai of all places? What led you to Shanghai? And for me, I was looking at a way to press the reset button on life in a lot of ways. I was coming out of a divorce and feeling pretty unfulfilled in a corporate human resources job. And I wanted to get back to my love of learning and my love of being a teacher. Um, I've always been very interested in Chinese culture and thought that immersing myself in the culture would be one way of achieving that. Uh, before I left the States, I made sure to come with a game plan and I was going to immerse myself in education. I was gonna immerse myself in public speaking and I was also very interested in entertainment. So comedy for me was the way to do that. And so far, I've been out here working. I made a commitment to myself that from the time I would wake up to the time I would go to sleep, I would commit my day to educating, entertaining, and inspiring. And I've been very grateful to encounter a lot of great people along the way, especially the students that I've taught. I've taught students from various backgrounds, various walks of life, and I've been very fortunate. Making the decision to move to Shanghai was a great decision. And it allowed me to grow and expand in ways that I never imagined. And that means a lot when you're in your mid thirties and, and trying to figure out, okay, where do I go to now? What's the next level for me? And so living here has been able to, it has helped me uh, do those things. I am making the decision to go back home. And it's not just because of what's going on globally right now, but uh, because next step for me would be to enjoy what I've built here and build it again for myself at home or come in established and start knocking things out, start achieving as I go on my way. Are there difficulties in doing that as a black woman? Yes, there are. But I'm grateful that the right people have been put in my life. I'm grateful to have been able to attract a tribe, to attract people that look like me, to perform for people that look like me and be a part of this community. Have I faced discrimination? Yes, I faced discrimination. Uh, it's easy to say that when you're in a place that hasn't really had its borders open for others for more than the past 25 or 30 years. I was hoping that when Black Panther came out, we would see more billboards, commercial billboards and stuff, put Lupita and them on it, and Serena Williams would be on billboards and stuff, and things would be a little bit more accepting. I've been very fortunate to encounter some people who are accepting of me um, being a black woman, but I've also encountered people who just don't know any better. There have been times where I've wowed crowds just by delivering an inspiring speech. And I do get the whole, oh, you're just so articulate. You're so intelligent. And I have to pause and think, what were you really expecting? And why was I gonna show you anything less? I'm making the decision to come home, been home quite often over the past year. I'm grateful to have a job which allows me and affords me the chance to be able to do that. I've learned to not take my friends and family back home for granted, and I wanna be there for them, especially my mom. So to spend that good quality time with friends and family, to try to be the best 
daughter, girlfriend, friend, confidant, creator that I could be while I was at home. So again, I'm very blessed to, to have the friends and family that I have, to have made the acquaintances that I've made and, and, and do the networking that I've done. And here's hoping that I've kindled some lifelong friendships and connections from here on out. But yeah, as soon as the school year is over, I'm back home to Chicago. Come with me. And it's a decision that I'm making for myself first and foremost. And while I'm there, I want to be a blessing to those in my life. And I hadn't heard of situations like what have been going on, going on here. So that's something that I'm grateful for. And I'm grateful that my friends and acquaintances haven't had that misfortune. But here's hoping and praying for a good outcome for all of those involved in spite of what's going on. I have a lot of hope for the future. I have a lot of hope for the future. In spite of everything that's going on, I feel like if you're not setting yourself up for those next moves, if you're not setting yourself up for success, once things get back to a new normal or some semblance of normal, you're missing out. So whether it's having meaningful communication and connections with those that matter the most to you, if it's not taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, taking care of yourself spiritually is so important. And I felt like there were some points where I needed to just stop everything I was doing and give thanks and be grateful and look at the things in my life that have gone right and be very grateful for them. To be grateful for something as simple as waking up in my right mind, in my bed, breathing, seeing all my senses intact. You know, those little things that we take for granted, I don't take for granted. Taking care of myself physically is something else I have to do because I have packed on a little bit of, a little bit of a midsection, got the love hand sneaking on me. In, but, uh, you know, waist trainer and a 10 minute belly blaster workout help to keep me engaged that way and get those endorphins rushing around and get me hyped up on life and ready to focus on that next thing so and then being creative being creative it's really hard sometimes and you struggle with a restless imagination restless thoughts and so sometimes it's just a matter of sitting down getting the trusty pen out writing those thoughts out new joke comes to mind, new punchline, new tags. I'm writing. Uh, with being on the go so often for the better part of the past three and a half years, I've learned the value of sometimes just being still. This has been a huge exercise in stillness and surrender. And sometimes you just have to listen to your body, quiet your mind, see what it needs. And if it needs just a half a day to veg out, cool. It needs a half a day to veg out and binge watch some crazy shows. Cool. If you need to just pick up a book, cool. If you need to go ahead and get your, sorry, I got my big face in the camera. If you need to go ahead and journal it out, cool. But taking that time for yourself, making yourself your number one priority, all that is paramount. Here and now, it's paramount. I promise for my next video, I will put on makeup and everything and look totally camera ready. But for now, I just wanted to give it to you nat all natural. I will put this bird's nest up and be totally ready for the next time. But if you have any questions in particular about me, about living abroad, about living in Asia, feel free. Send me a PM, send me some comments. I'm out here.